Martin for the Supplemental Instruction Series of Videos for Chem 121. And today we're going to be practicing with nomenclature. You know, Kevin, I've noticed that every time you come on screen, you always take a bow to introduce yourself. Yeah, now I think about it, you're right. It's my habit, I suppose. I guess I should start doing that too. Okay. I'm Joey Smokey. And today we're going to be practicing with nomenclature. So, Kevin, this is a lot of examples. That's a lot of examples, that's true. How do I know what's what? Well, we have a nice variety of compounds. You know, they range from all the different types of compounds. And could you tell me what those three different types of compounds are? Well, if I remember right, we have the covalent compounds, which mm -hmm. are between two nonmetals. That's right. We have the ionic compounds, which is between a metal and a nonmetal. Uh huh. And we have a special variation of the ionic compounds using transitional metals, where you have, you know, obviously a transitional metal and a nonmetal. That's right. So, hidden inside all these examples, we have one of every kind. That's right. This sounds kind of complicated. Eh, maybe at first, but we'll get through it. Okay. So, starting with this one. Okay, so, let me grab my pen. Let's see, we have OS, which is osmium, and mm -hmm. that's a transitional metal, isn't it? That's correct. Okay, then you have oxygen, O, obviously. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to say osmium tetroxide. Ooh. No? Not quite. You know, you do use prefixes, but not for that kind of compound. You only use it for uh, one kind of compound. That's right, that the covalent one. ones. That's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. All right. Okay. So, this is a transition metal, so you're going to be treating it a little differently. Oh, I know what we have to do. Since right. it's transitional, we don't know the charge on the osmium. That's right. So, we basically kind of have to work backwards and figure out the charge from our nonmetal. Yeah. Okay. So we know that oxygen has a negative two charge. That's right. And we have four of them, right? Mm -hmm. So negative two times four equals a grand total of negative eight. That's right. And since we know basically all compounds have to be neutral, right? Then the osmium must be plus eight. That's right. Cool. Okay. So. So what does that tell us? That tells us. Um, now, what's that thing when we do transitional metals? Isn't there something in the middle we're supposed to put? Yeah. It's. Remember, with transition metals, you need a Roman numeral to represent uh, the charge right. of the metal. Okay, so then, to name this, it's going to be osmium. Mm -hmm. And the Roman numeral eight. That's right. And then oxide. That's right. And no prefixes, because that's just yep. for covalent. And that's for covalent. So, okay. the osmium eight oxide, the Roman numeral eight, tells you that the osmium has a positive eight. Cool. And then... Other than that, it's just like naming an ionic compound. Very good. All right. Okay. Now on to this lovely thing. Okay, so we got phosphorus. Mm -hmm. P is phosphorus, not potassium. Mm -hmm. And then we have chlorine, which is Cl. Now, let's see. Both of those are nonmetals, aren't they? They are indeed nonmetals. Okay, so that means we're dealing with a covalent compound, which right. means we are going to have to use prefixes. That's right. Okay, so we have one phosphorus, so monophosphorus, five Ooh. chlorine. What? You don't use mono for the phosphorus. Why? Well, with remember, with covalent compounds, if you have the first element and there's only one of it, mm -hmm. you just skip the mono part entirely. So it's just okay. phosphorus. Okay. What about if there's only one of the last one? What if it's like PCL? Well, with the last, with the second one, you have to put a prefix in front of that no matter what, even if okay. there's only one. Okay. So it's, if the CL was just one, it'd be monochloride. Okay, so then for this one, so we have five chlorides, that's mm -hmm. penta. So yeah. I'm going to name this as phosphorus pentachloride. That's correct. Oh, ah, okay. This tells us that there is one phosphorus and five chlorines. So that's pretty nifty. Yep. Cool. All right. So that one, mm -hmm. let's see. Na is sodium. Na is sodium. Okay. S is sulfur. Mm -hmm. And O is oxygen. Yep. Okay, but I'm confused here. So we have the metal, and but we have two nonmetals as opposed to just one. So That's right. So is there some kind of fancy way we need to name it, or? Not really. Just bear in mind, if you have something like this where you have, oh, here's one metal, but here's two nonmetals, what's mm -hmm. going on? Now, usually when you have two nonmetals paired with a metal like this, the two nonmetals form what's called the polyatomic ion. Oh, is that that list I'm supposed to memorize? That's right. Okay. So, be sure to look at that list and memorize what they are and their charges. Okay, so SO3 is going to be, let's see, sulfite. That's sulfite, yes. Okay. So, we're going to name this just like regular ionic compound then? Yep. 
Okay, so if that's the case, I'm going to say that it's going to be sodium sulfite. That's right. Just like that. Simple as that. Cool. I like it. All right. Now let's go on to this lovely specimen. V2O3. It looks kind of nos almost. Well, let's work through it. Okay. Let's see what we get. All right. So V vanadium. Vanadium. Yep. Okay. Now let's see. That's in the transitional metals, isn't it? That is a transition metal. That's correct. Okay. And then we have the O, the oxygen. Yeah. Okay. Friend oxygen. So since it's transitional, we're gonna have to work backwards. That's right. So oxygen is a negative two charge. Mm -hmm. We have three of them which is a total of negative six, uh -huh. which means that the vanadium must have a positive six. Yep. Okay? So if I name that, it's going to be vanadium six oxide. Ooh, so close. What, what, what did I do wrong? Well, you were fine up to this point. I mean, in, there is indeed a total negative six in the oxygen, mm -hmm. and a total of positive six on the vanadium. Mm -hmm. But you have to keep in mind, there's two vanadiums. Oh, and they share that positive they charge. They share so that positive charge. Gotcha. They total to plus six. Okay, which means then that since the vanadiums have to equal a total of positive six, I'll have to divide by the number of vanadiums, which is two, mm -hmm. to figure out the independent charge each vanadium has. That's right. Okay, so in this case, if I divide it, it's going to be divided by two equals a positive three. That's right. Okay, so if I name this, will be vanadium three oxide. Right. All right. Cool. Right you are. So vanadium, and that's the Roman numeral three in the middle. Mm -hmm. Oxide. That's right. Cool. Okay. Now with these compounds, you want to make sure you know the number of transition metals there are. Like mm -hmm. if there's one or two or three, because you can easily like speed along on a test or whatever and miss that, and you know you get dinged for it. Like I almost did. Yeah. So just be just bear that in mind and take a close look. Okay. That's good advice. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs>